When it comes to stories meant to scare every fiber of your being, as a reader I assume many of you expect a truly scary story that you can fully process in order to absorb the horrific elements of a piece of creative or memorial writing. When someone has finished reading a piece of either true or fictional literary work, they obviously want themselves to be impacted by it in some way, shape, or form depending on their intention when reading it. Reading works intended to be scary is when the reader in question wants the hairs on their body to be standing up, having to constantly look over their shoulder, not being able to draw themselves away from the story, yet dreading the big scare, and any other common behavior pertaining to reactions caused by something scary. If you're someone who browses around for terrifying and thrilling stories on particularly the internet, you've more than likely came across the term creepypasta, horror-related legends that have been copied and pasted around the internet. They're often brief, user-generated, paranormal stories intended to scare readers. They include gruesome tales of murder, suicide, and otherworldly, more supernatural occurrences, with the type having its peak audience in 2010, when it was covered by the New York Times according to Time Magazine. Some notable creepypastas include Ben Drown, Jeff the Killer, Ted the Caver, and Slenderman, just to name a few notable stories. Among these is Lavender Town Syndrome. A story about how the theme song to a Pokemon town caused the suicides and illnesses of children between the ages of 7 to 12, shortly after the release of Pokemon Red and Green in Japan. Rumors say that these suicides and illnesses only occurred after the children playing the game reached Lavender Town whose theme music had extremely high frequencies that studies show that only children and young teens can hear since their ears are more sensitive. Due to the lavender tone, at least 200 children supposedly committed suicide, and many more developed illnesses and afflictions. The children who committed suicide usually did so by hanging or jumping from heights. Those who didn't acted irrationally and complained of severe headaches after listening to Lavender Town's theme. Although Lavender Town now sounds differently depending on the game, the mass hysteria was caused by the first Pokemon game released. After the Lavender Town incident, the programmers had fixed Lavender Town's theme music to be at a lower frequency, and since, children were no longer affected by it. This pasta's main flaw is its premise. Every reader has a different scare threshold, but when you have stories like the Russian sleep experiment, My Father Punished Me When I Talked to Ghosts, and distorted warning signals, the high frequency annoyance from a kid's video game would probably be successful in scaring a specific demographic, but not the majority of creepypasta enthusiasts. Obviously we don't know what the original author's intentions were, so it probably wasn't to cater to a certain market, but they could find something creepier than this. Squidward Suicide is one that gets under my skin from time to time, and it's straight out of a Nickelodeon cartoon. But if you've watched that show for more than 10 seconds, you know that Squidward killing himself as grounds in reality, knowing who he lives in between, who he works with, how unsuccessful his musical and artistic ventures are, and where he'd rather be in his life. Off topic. Anyway, anybody on any spectrum of skepticism would already be unenthusiastic about this pasta knowing that if Nintendo was ultimately responsible for the suicides and illnesses of multiple children, they'd be driven into the ground amid stacks of lawsuits taller than their corporate office, and they'd seek another profit-generating venture with Pokemon as a franchise never seeing the light of day again. Clearly, creepypastas aren't true and you have to go into them with some acceptance of the supernatural and fictional. The narrative is riddled with plot holes and legal absurdity and its characters don't really seem to resonate with me the way a character in a piece of horror should. Having significant relevance to the plot, moving the experience to a place where it wouldn't be without the presence of the character, showing a different personality or archetype, and just being a delight to have in general, but I don't think anyone here does any of that right. It seems actual humans were put into the plot just to explain how the song got how it was in the first place and what its intention was. The progression of the plot leaves you at a dead end and doesn't really resolve anything, besides telling some sort of origin story. Like a lot of creepypastas, it leaves you on a cliffhanger, but everything in between the explanation of the premise to its call to action seems like something to pad out its length and make it qualify as a creepypasta, since it's clearly meant to give me some substance to an otherwise written down concept with just superstition to fuel the reader's fear behind it. When you boil it all down, this story is just some mildly eerie, albeit somewhat infuriating, video game sound file that managed to slightly creep out some kid during their childhood while they played this game, and they wanted others to share their fear by conjuring up a story of Japanese kids that committed suicide because of the song. 
It's like the gloomy Sunday song. There's nothing in the song in and of itself that makes people off themselves, since the vast majority of people who listen to it aren't even affected by it, and the people that have a chance of self-harm already have cases of underlying conditions in their lives that push them over the edge in the first place, with the song only a very minor piece in the puzzle. The song in no way causes kids to kill themselves, and if it somehow does manage to do that to one child, have it be the only music I listen to for the rest of my life. The entire creepypasta is based around doubt that it's safe, with a thrown together scenario conjured up at the last moment to give substance and depth to a myth. That's why I think this creepypasta sucks.